Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. Today I'm going to share our family recipe for making homemade meatballs. Thanks to my sister-in-law Franca, who is a fantastic cook herself, uh, we've had this recipe in the Koya family for years. And it starts with ground meat and I'm going to say there is a difference in the meat that you use. So we like to use what I call the Italian triple mix. Ground beef, ground veal, ground pork. That combo, those three flavors put together is absolutely fantastic when it comes to making meatballs. Okay, so I have uh, about this today. It's freshly ground meat, uh, the triple mix, and there's two pounds here. So I've got the recipe here that we've had written down for 20, 30 years now at least. So it basically it calls for one pound of ground meat, uh, two tablespoons of parsley, one and a half teaspoons of minced garlic, a third cup of breadcrumbs, one eighth teaspoon of salt, one eighth teaspoon of black pepper, and two eggs. So that's the recipe, and I'll put, I'll put it in the description below for you so you've got it, of course. Um, and because I have two pounds of ground meat, I have to double that. So I've done that already. So I've got my, my parsley here, fresh parsley. Put that in. I've got my garlic. Gonna add that. Okay, nice freshly uh, minced garlic. Now the breadcrumbs, I get my breadcrumbs from our local bakery. Those are always the best. If you can get them at a bakery, the Italian breadcrumbs, by far the best breadcrumbs. Uh, as a last resort, I guess you could buy the ones in the tins at the store, but uh, that's got to be a last resort for me. I really, uh, I always keep some spare on hand. So from the local bakery. Okay, and now I add my eggs. Add them one at a time, and you can make sure that you don't get any eggshells in your uh, in your ground beef or ground meat mixture, I should say. Okay, that's two, three, and four. So, the one thing I did not add, which you heard me mention, was the black pepper. I've been avoiding black pepper lately. It hasn't been agreeing with me, so I'm gonna leave it out, and I can tell you I've made my, uh, my meatballs without ground, uh, without black pepper. Um, the last few times and it's perfectly fine. So for today I'm going to leave it out and of course it goes without saying you always start with clean hands. That's a given. Mine are clean but we'll uh, give them another rinse because your hands are going to have to get right in there. You could wear gloves because of course the meat is, uh, is going to be cold but basically what you want to do now it's called it's, it's, a, it's a method for mixing meat that, they, uh, that the bakers use uh, when mixing dough. It's called the pincer method. And basically you're, you're squeezing, you're getting all the ingredients and you're, you're squeezing them together into your uh, ground meat. Turn it over and just incorporate all those ingredients. So as you're doing this, it's going to be a little bit um, moist, okay? But as you continue to work it into the beef, what will happen is your mixture starts to, uh, starts to firm up and starts to dry up and you'll notice that as you're moving along. So, you know what I always say, I have expression and my kids will tell you, they know it, they hear it, even my friends know it, when it comes to mixing. When you think you've mixed enough, mix some more, because you cannot over mix. And by mixing it together, you're just making sure that all those ingredients are distributed evenly throughout your meat mixture. So, it pays to take that little bit of extra effort and just mix it a little bit longer than you normally would. This has come together nicely, so I'm gonna mix it just a little bit more. In keeping with my own wisdom. All right, so that's pretty good. So now, what I like to do now, I make my meatballs and I put them in a plastic tray. And I'll tell you why I do that. Because I'm gonna freeze these so I don't measure, that's one thing I don't measure. I guess you could if you had a little, a little scoop, a little ice cream scoop, you could measure and make all your meatballs the same size. But I like to make mine a little bit, I'm gonna say a little bit bigger than normal. I like them a little bit bigger. And with these meatballs, 
you could do you could do anything you want. If you haven't yet, I have a video where I show how we make our classic Italian uh, tomato sauce and we use uh, meatballs as part of that recipe. I'll put a link here for you. You could check that out. But you could use these for making your tomato sauce. You can make a nice meatball subs. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do with, uh, with the meatballs. And in fact, if you want to, you could make real small meatballs, tiny little guys like this. And I remember my sister-in-law doing this. And you put all these little tiny meatballs into your Italian wedding soup your homemade soups and it makes for a great soup. So the sky's the limit as to what you can do with the meatballs. But once, once you've got them made, separate them like so. And I'll put this whole tray right in the freezer, the whole tray right in. And then tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll take it out of the freezer because I don't want them to get freezer burnt and they'll all be solid frozen individually. Uh, then quite simply I get a freezer bag and I put them all into the freezer bag and because they're all individually frozen they don't stick together so now when I'm cooking if I want to take out five or six meatballs out of the bag the freezer bag it's very easy to do that so it's a great way to not only make your meatballs but also to store your meatballs so that's basically it that is our traditional recipe for making meatballs and I'm just going to continue rolling here and I would like to add one thing. I mean, I know a lot of people just buy pre-made frozen meatballs, but I've been talking for probably not that long. Um, and look at already, I've got, you know, eight meatballs done. It doesn't take long. You can have this done in 15 minutes and you've got fresh homemade meatballs made by yourself, um, ready to go and in the freezer and you'll have them for, you know, weeks to come uh, to prepare with your recipes. So I hope you give this a try. By all means, leave me a comment. If you have a favorite recipe for meatballs you'd like to share with us and our viewers, uh, just drop us a comment. Or if you've tried this recipe, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, everyone who's tried it here loves it and I hope you will too. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, good luck and bon appetit. Uh, I've got five meatballs here and as you can tell they're a little still frozen. I just took them out of the freezer. I made them myself. They're my own homemade meatballs. I'll share that recipe with you one day. Uh, and I'm just going to put these in frozen. If you have fresh ones just put them in fresh. It's whatever, whatever works. But these frozen they will cook up by the time the sauce is ready with no problem at all. So now I've got my meatballs in there. Now it's time to add what I'm going to call my secret ingredient. And this